just you. Joe, this is just a bunch of words. I mean, you'd say anything to get what you want. Listen, I can't do anything without you, Rita. Joe, please, just go away. What is it this time, Norman? Huh, still Norman? Tell me something, Rita. What do you see in your mind? Well, if I had several years, I, maybe I could explain it. Cut it. The guy isn't a man. Is that what you proved last night when you beat him up? I don't have to prove anything to him. I proved it to you. There's no competition. You know that. I do not. Leave me alone, Joe. Oh. You stop that jumping around now. I'm telling you, you forget about him. You understand me? Norm and I are finished. You know, thanks to you. But if Norm didn't exist, you know, if he was the only guy around, I still wouldn't go near you. Now, you just quit kidding yourself, because you're not kidding me. That night in the warehouse, you were there, baby. You were all there. All you needed is to be reminded of it. tell you that you and you alone are the only one that saves this place from boredom? Hello, Norman. Hi. Mind if I stand here in Ogle while you lock up? Not at all, but I'm in a hurry. I've been hired by the Schusters to keep Kim out of mischief tonight. I wish Rod would hire you to keep me out of mischief. I don't think anybody could do that. Okay, Doe Eyes. The path is straight and narrow. Face the front. Don't ask the wounded if it hurts, where it hurts or how much it hurts, okay? Fair enough. Where were you going before you decided to go in the opposite direction with me? Is that a subtle hint to get lost? Not at all. I was just asking. Why I was going in the opposite direction, as you so brilliantly observed. I hear the clam bake was great. Yes, it was fun. We missed you. I heard about what happened last night, and I'm sorry. Feeling sorry for Norman time again. Don't you get tired of that? Don't you? I'm sorry. I asked for it. Why don't you come with us tonight? You and Rod? Nope. No. Kim and me. Where are you going? I don't know. The Schusters are having a party, so we've got to get out of the house. Hey, I heard there's a, uh, uh, dumpy circus over in White River. Let's see, I got 350, so that would be, uh, rides are 10 cents apiece. That would be 100 and, uh, it's 3 into 50 would be 16, would be 116 rides. That ought to be a couple hours of fun. Come on, what do you say? I think Kim will dig it. She'll like all the colors and everything just roaring around. Oh, I'd like to, but I don't think I'd better take her out of town. What a world. Why don't you come with us to the library? Mrs. Schuster's having me pick up some books for Kim. The library? Well, we can think of something to do later on. Huh? 
So I'll see you there. Bye-bye. Mr. and Mrs. Elliot Carson were among the guests attending an informal buffet dinner given by Mr. and Mrs. David Schuster. The evening was considered a huge success by one and all, since there were no visible signs of any bloodshed. What do you think of the new editor's first contribution to the Clarion? I just wish we were about to read that item and not live it. I think it'd be easier to live myself. I've never been very comfortable on the society page. Oh. Now, why did I do that? What? Oh, I, I sprayed my hair before I put my dress on. <laughs> Probably for the same reason I was shining my left shoe twice. Oh, Ellie. <laughs> Are you mad? I had a wet hand. I realized what I put us up for when I accepted the Schuster invitation. We've carefully wrapped ourselves in a cocoon of understanding friends. And now when we want to try our wings for the first time, it's over hostile territory. But I think we both believe that if we duck this one, we'll have to resign ourselves to that cocoon for the rest of our lives. I'm ready when you are, fearless leader. <laughs> Mrs. Schuster. He probably burned the dinner rolls, wants us to bring some on the way over. Hello? Is this Mrs. Carson? I have an overseas call for you. Yes, this is Mrs. Carson. It's long distance. Who is it? Connie. Oh, yes, this is Constance. I hope I haven't interrupted dinner. No, Leslie. We were just getting ready to go out to dinner. Where are you calling from? Rome. Must be in the middle of the night there. Not exactly. I just got in. I thought it would be more convenient for you if I called at this time. Connie, the reason I'm calling is, well, frankly, you're the only one I could call. What is it, Leslie? Well, we've been through a lot together. Well, not always together, but so we have a special link. I should hope so. Rodney's written that he's seeing Allison. His letters are vague. One word descriptions of his and Norman's life. Our telephone conversations are more of the same. Transatlantic grunts. How are they getting along? Rodney and Allison? Well, they, they're getting along, Leslie. Is that all? What do you want me to say? And Norman? We, uh, we don't see much of Norman, Leslie. You're as vague as Rodney. Constance, we did what we did for our children. Our past is their present. I just want to find out if it's affected them. It's affected all of us, Leslie. But I, I think they'll survive. Well, you seem to have found that courage we talked about. Congratulations on your marriage. Thank you. Is Elliot there? Yes. Would he speak to me? He wants to talk to you. Hello, Harrington. Elliot, how are you? Uh, what's the standard remark? No complaints? You have many, but you're too much of a gentleman to go into them. I just congratulated Constance on your marriage. I've been following your progress in the Clarion. Well, then you know the rest of it. What do you mean? Now, Matt Swain is taking a leave of absence. I'm going to be the new editor. No, I didn't know. It takes a while for the papers to catch up with me. Well, I guess more congratulations are in order. Well, it may be a bit premature. I haven't actually started yet. You'll do a good job, Carson. Times change. People don't. What can I tell my readers about you? I'm still playing musical countries. I've yet to see Greece. And after that? I never planned more than a week in advance. Well, I'm sorry to have taken up so much of your time. Please apologize to Constance for me. Uh, Harrington, why did you call? To see what the climate was. I'm glad it's gotten warmer. Goodbye. What did he say? He wanted to know how the climate was. He 
You went to a lot of trouble just for weather it. Preview from the continuing story of Peyton Place. We're going to go see Norman. And we're going to tell him the truth about you and Rita. And we're going to do it right now. I guess everything's relative. You are the most totally selfish person I've ever met. Face your problems and solve them right here in Peyton Place. For once in my life, when am I going to get a break? You make your own breaks!